and welcome back to my channel. Now, the last couple of weeks I've spoken to two amazing athletes, Yona Knight Wisdom, the first male diver to represent Jamaica at the Olympic Games in diving, Rhea Gale, gymnast turned diver, used to dive with me in Plymouth as one of my teammates, and now is in bodybuilding as a pro figure athlete. So she's doing incredibly well, and today I'm going to be speaking to Peppermint, who is a singer. TV personality, uh, finalist on RuPaul's Drag Race, but also an incredible trans activist. And I am so excited to hear about her work, what she's doing, how we can be better allies uh, for the trans community. So I'm going to get her on the line and we're going to have a little chat. Hello, Peppermint. How are you? Hi, Tom. Hello. I'm fabulous. Thank you. Good. Um, it's, it's funny. I was just speaking to Lance, my husband, and apparently you sat next to each other at a, was it a Night of a Thousand Gowns or something like Ball of a Thousand Gowns, something like that? I think it was Night of a Thousand Gowns. We were both sitting next to each other as when he was honored. He was to be honored. Yeah. Uh, this was probably like two years ago. Um, yeah, he was actually yeah, very sneaking in. <laughs> he just yeah. I was trying to sneak away. I'm not camera ready. I, he was funny because he he literally I've just put him through a workout, so he's you know disgusting, sweaty. But you know I can't hear you, but I gotta say I love you, I miss you. Please come visit us when it's safe again. Yes. Right. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for thank you for having a little chat with me. I think it's been um, really important that I for myself to try and learn more, educate myself more, and, you know, because I think everything has opened up the eyes to so many people, and I think now is a time, and it feels like a revolution. It feels like now is the time that people need to step up, and I, I, I mean, first of all, I guess, what has been your experience in the part, well, not just, well, your whole life, not just the past few weeks that people have started to take notice? Well, um, it's been a lot. <laughs> uh, I've certainly had a lot of experiences that um, were were experiences that I wish that I hadn't had. Um, that I learned at one point or another pretty early on that this was just kind of the way the world is. Um, and most of those things were regarding. <laughs> it's like half and half. Half of those things, more than half of those things were re regarding race and how I fit into the story and, and what the, the trend of results would be in experiences. You know, if I'm having this experience, chances are this will be the outcome. And here it is. And, there, and you know, and so like the trend of those things happening. Um, and then also uh, in a similar fashion, regarding gender and my queerness, which is something I'm sure that you and I can both, you know, understand to an extent. And, um, and so I agree with you. It does feel like we are sort of on the precipice of great change. I mean, this is definitely the most woke <laughs> um, yeah. I've ever seen the world. Uh, I certainly remember movements happening that were widespread. And I remember uh, being satisfied or placated by sort of um, the performative uh, advocacy, you know, with, with AIDS and HIV, it was like all the celebrities needed to do was wear a red ribbon and then everything's great, um, <laughs> you know, or just putting a hashtag for something um, and so I think now we're also starting to realize that we've come so we've come so far in the past. I feel like maybe we've come further in the past few weeks or couple months than we have in the past ten years with yeah. regards to race and police brutality, and that's the, the the mantle piece. But I think the one of the things that's also really interesting is that it also is sort of involving a, a type of intersectionality. Mm -hmm. um, and a domino effect of different people, different organizations, understanding that there's sort of an accountability um, and an atonement that needs to happen for the past. And then also um, a paradigm shift where mm -hmm. we make a pledge to do things differently in the future. And a lot of that involves sort of the learning that you were talked about. 
exactly because I've I've seen lots of uh, my friends and I've seen lots of celebrities post you know the black square and then all of a sudden the next day their feeds are back to normal and it's and not sh continuing to share things not actually choosing to educate themselves and go any further like for example I've it's, I mean, I don't know if even if I should even get involved in this, but recently my... Um, well, then do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but I have people... Boris Johnson just made um, announcements about easing lockdown and saying that things, certain things were going to open, but pools weren't going to open. And then all of a sudden my, my uh, team were like saying, OK, can we do a, some kind of campaign like not my actual management team but like the pool were like oh we need to do a campaign to open the pool and get things back open this is outrageous like, tweet your MPs sign a petition and I'm and I was just like it I it, it literally made me so mad I was just like are you kidding me you put you put this effort and you want to make this big fuss about opening a pool three weeks earlier and just well, rather than waiting three weeks what about supporting our black brothers and sisters and actually uplifting their voices and doing something about that what why are you worrying about uh, going for a swim there's far there are far more pressing things that in people's lives people's lives are at risk why are we worrying about a pool like just things like that that were people with priorities just makes me so incredibly mad and i i, I mean i i bet you face that all the time well yeah and i, I have a similar feeling i mean it's really interesting where uh, things that we would have engaged in um, a month, even, even one month ago, suddenly see, I won't say are less important, but certainly are in a different, have a, are in a different order in terms, in terms of the priorities, at least in my experience and what I've seen from other people. And I'm really thankful for that, that people are taking this very seriously. Um, you know, we are on, I feel like we collectively, globally, have the chance, it feels like we have the chance to destroy racism. Yeah. That's what it feels like. I know that's a tall order mm -hmm. and that's not so easily done, but it feels like we have the chance to do that. And it feels like we are so more, just much more close than we've ever been, closer than we've ever been. And so we can't give up now. We have to keep these conversations. And unfortunately for us, but fortunately, for the sake of eradicating um, racism or at least dismantling racism um, systemically, we have plenty of reminders. There was a video that came out today of a, of a man, thankfully he didn't lose his life. Um, and this happened, actually happened at like, uh, in, I think in February, where he was tackled to the ground, bones broken by the police officers who didn't ask it, the, the tackling police officer sne snuck up on him from behind while he was talking to another officer. The first officer was trying to get the information. And the other officer was like, oh, there's a black man and tackled him, broke his bones. And it only took two minutes before they were like, oh, this is the wrong guy. And oh. great, I know some people might say, well, it only took two minutes, but why did he have to have his bones broken if it only takes two minutes to find out that that's not the person. Yeah. And, <laughs> and so all of a sudden, Tiger King doesn't seem as interesting to me. No, absolutely. You know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I, he's like gone. Oh my God. But like, I, I genuinely think that this Pride Month in itself, I think will go down like 2020 is going to go down in history as a, a a crazy year anyway but this pride month i think the coalition of build bringing everyone together all of the minorities working together and i think that's the only way people can create change all minorities working together whether that's a queer community um whether that's people of color whatever it is people coming together to help fight the the fight for people's lives this is not just you know like you say and I think, especially as a trans woman, I mean, you see the stats of life expectancy, and I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I read that the life expectancy is like 35 for a trans person. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, and I, I don't know, that, that's the one thing that's really interesting, is that, um, again, the term of 
intersectionality, not only in identities, but also in circumstances. The, these things are so layered. And so when we talk about the life expectancy of a trans woman, we're talking about the trend of murders that happen um, where trans women are being killed. Not all, all trans women, not just black trans women, although a majority of them are trans women of color globally. Um, and so we see that and, we're, and when we think about this number, whatever it is annually, it correlates to the number of murders that's been handed, the, that the police have investigated or that we find out from law enforcement. But the truth of the matter is, depending on where you live, many of those murders or, or deaths or, or robberies or crimes or violent crimes aren't even properly reported because many of these police officers or the people who are in charge of doing the reporting mm. live in a jurisdiction where they can't or personally don't believe that they should report on this as a woman with her name. They'll use the, uh, the, 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 what we would call the dead name, um, the previous name of, of the victim. Um, and that's linked to many uh, municipalities, many cities passing policies that are anti-trans, that do not allow trans people to get documents and an ID that says their real name and a, a credit card or a debit card or a bank card or whatever they're going to you know, need, social um, uh, birth certificate. And... And so that's one more barrier. And so when people like the um, that fiction writer that lives in Europe, that redheaded fiction writer mm. uh, that lives in England, when people like that say, espouse these um, comments that are, I won't even call them damaging and harmful and hateful, that's my opinion, but at least it, it, it gives the signal to the people that are in charge of making those policies that stop trans people from having their ID, to the police officer that's identifying this body and saying, well, we'll just call it a him. It, it empowers those people to do those things. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, we don't have the real numbers for how many trans people are victims of violent crime. And I think it's also, I am a gay man, but I have, and I understand what it means to be in the queer community, but I can't, can't even begin to, I can try to understand, but I can't understand what it would be to be a trans person. And no one, unless they're going through that, unless they educate themselves, talk to people, and actually try to enlighten themselves about what you've, people like you've had to go through. Like it's, you know, and the, feeling of being on the outside and feeling, you know, that you're always up against obstacles. There, there is, it is, it's interesting that for the longest time, um, especially when we were um, marching for uh, marriage equality in the States and that conversation uh, was, was in full swing mm -hmm. globally, there was a feeling that we're all on the same team, but it was, uh, and we, we, as in people like me, women of co women, people of color, femme people, um, and other folks, non-binary folks, bisexual folks, were kind of just accepting the fact that whenever anybody would say, because the new term instead of gay was LGBT, when when anybody would say LGBT, and they'd be like, here's an LGBT American, or here's an LGBT person. It would be a gay white man, white man. right? Yeah. And we just kind of accept that. <laughs> I, I think you know this month, like the U.S. has made protect like leaps in some protections, but then at the same time, in the U.K., Boris Johnson is like threatening to like pull dial back some of the things with uh, ID cards and all those kinds of things. And it's it's you know I it's something that I think a lot of straight well a lot of um well straight people but also gay white cis men need to pull their finger out and get to it and help and use their voices and it's up to us to be the people that bring in people of color bring in trans people bring in bisexual people you know the whole queer community, non-binary, everyone needs to come together and it needs to be, the LGBT community needs to be seen as what it is. And it's not just white gay men.
and it's something that you know I I mean I I'm a white gay man and I feel really bad because I feel like I I'm trying to do everything I can but you just feel bad because you can just so blatantly see what TV shows do you have a you have a like a gay couple it's you know it's not representative of what a, a gay couple in the real world is so it's it, I, I guess it's down to you know, you know, people that can create change and visibility in Hollywood even can help make a change, right? Yeah, um, for sure. I think the movements, the most successful movements, really do um, include obviously legislation and passing a passing of policies, marching in the streets for sure. That's how we get the attention. And then you know, once those laws are passed, that helps with the laws but it doesn't necessarily change. It might change how people behave, but it doesn't change how they feel. Mm -hmm. um, and so the thing that changes how people feel are art, entertainment, TV, Hollywood, movies, film, all those things. Yeah, it's like telling the, my husband always says, it's about telling personal stories. Sharing your story can help change people's hearts. And if you can change someone's heart, you can change someone's mind. And I think that's, you know, the power of storytelling and the power of visibility and, you know, helping to raise people's voices that need it. And that's what we need to do more than ever right now. And that, like one question I have for you is how can, what can we do to be better allies? I think the one answer that answers all of that is more, you know, yeah. it's just more. Whatever we're already doing, just keep doing more and we'll know when we get there. That's the yeah. simple answer. And that, what does that mean? That means more protesting. If you've already protested, protest again. If you've marched or if you uh, get donated and you can afford to do it, do, donate again to a cause or a charity. And try to diversify your charities, your, give, your, genera your generosity. Maybe don't just, maybe this month give to a, a mainstream organization that frankly, if you take a look, is headed up and controlled by cis, gay, white men, okay, great, They're, they can help with the, this situation, but then also look and see what uh, organizations directly impact the quality of life for people of color or for uh, trans folks or whatever. And so to tr diversify that a little bit, um, you can also have more conversations, like the one that we're having, and then go and take those conversations and have them with our friends and family, people that, with our family, not just yeah. our friends, because our friends tend to think the same as we do mm -hmm. with our family. The ones that we know are going to think differently, you know, and I think Absolutely. that's a start. Yeah, I know. I, and it's, I've spoken to a couple of um, athletes on the previous couple of weeks and that for them, it's been, they've just made the most thing that they notice is like racial banter. Um, I don't know if banter is a word that you use in America. Oh yeah, talking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. So like just kind of, the way that people tell jokes and people just say things off the cuff and they they always are able to make some kind of snarky joke or just say something that's you know very tongue-in-cheek but at the same time why say it and why is it even funny and it's been like now that i've been thinking about it and calling people out on it it's incredible how many times little things can just be there and you're like wait that's not okay and here's why kind of thing it's, it's it's been really interesting to now have it so on the forefront of everyone's mind to be calling people out and i think that's another thing that we can do i think at 100 percent, we are in this age of accountability and of course things like social media make it really easy and one thing that i would say it, to kind of have the, the the that need that i think should accompany uh the accountability the calling out of people, which is extremely important, I think it needs to be accompanied by sort of self-interrogation. Um, we, we should hold each other accountable for the things that we say and do, because even small things, microaggressions, can be damaging. But it's also really important that we sort of interrogate ourselves. No matter who we are, what color, what gender, what anything we are, we all have a relationship to sexism, misogyny, transphobia, racism, homophobia, mm. xenophobia, all the phobias. We all have a relationship to it. And so it's a good idea, I think, every once in a while or consistently, interrogate our relationship to that. 
maybe go a step beyond it's it's not good we we think it's wrong have we said or done anything in the past that someone mm. may have misconstrued or that someone may have you know that the impact may have been negative you know mm. and kind of constantly doing that and i think that's a good way to balance out so that everyone is completely in you know to put it in covid terms we'll hold each other accountable i'll tell you to wear your mask but i'll i'll make sure that i'm wearing mine too you yeah, know <laughs> absolutely yeah no it's it's true and it's i think it's again it comes down to even in the U, in the uk in schools we aren't taught black history we are not taught any, anything of the sort and it's it actually blows my mind, actually, that it's not part of every single school curriculum to know every single, but you know, we learn so much about history and it's all about, you know, things that are, for me, okay, in the UK, it's all Henry VIII and his six wives. And I'm like, great, he chopped his head off of two wives, but like, what is that gonna help with us right now? That's not, it's not really relevant. And it's like, now just, putting it into school curriculum and actually making it so that people know this stuff and it's, you have to know it, yeah, I think is important. Yeah, and we, and we didn't know it either. I mean, it's so interesting. I, I do remember hearing people, you know, like, uh, not only of the great things that, uh, that black people have contributed to uh, their, where they're from, their country, their city, their state, their culture, their profession, science, whatever, not only have those things been um, kind of erased or at least suppressed and hidden. Also, the uh, many atrocities that have been perpetrated on indigenous communities and, uh, you know, slaves and, and things of that sort. We're taught to celebrate, like, the great side of, you know, there are a lot of historic people who have done great things and they've done bad things too. And I understand the tendency to kind of skirt around those things. But in our country, we have so much history that we haven't learned about from, from black culture and black folks in the United States who were brought here to build this country. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, the notion that I got as a little girl was, oh, black people were slaves and we had, you know, um, Martin Luther King. And that's it. And that we're, other than that, we're just here and we never really seem to be getting ahead and we don't earn any money. Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't we learn about Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where black people were millionaires and doctors and lawyers and mayors, and then the white folks around them came in and slaughtered all of them. And then later on, 300 people, it was 1,200 block businesses in 35, I think, city blocks. It's a small city. That's small compared to New York. Yeah. Um, and, and these people, were, the buildings, the businesses were burned. The people were killed. Women and children and, and men were killed, burned, bodies dumped in the river. Okay. And that's not in our history books. And then the, those, just that example, the people and the descendants of those people, when it's written about, when, when trying to um, sort of uh, reconcile that, it was listed as a riot. Why was it listed as a riot? Because when it was listed as a riot, none of those businesses, the owners of those businesses, could claim insurance because it's listed as a riot. If it had been listed as what it was, an attack and a massacre, then those businesses would have been able to build equity. So then the, the, poor, the poor black population in Tulsa, whose grandparents were slaughtered, they would have equity and wealth that would have passed through. And that's one example of how when at face value, it looks like, oh, look at, let's say, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Look at those poor black people. They can never do anything. And that's what has been drilled into our heads. No, yeah. they had something and it was mm. taken and then kept quiet. And it's like, what about the, you know, you hear, it's, it's crazy as well. And, you know, you hear some people talking about how immigrants should not be allowed into America. And, and at the end of the day, you know, like it was the fact that everyone invaded and you know killed and slaughtered the Native Americans and you know that's you you were immigrants <laughs> and it's like and how they people can't see that and just you know it's it again it's, it's, it's all about knowing it and if you didn't know and you've just been brought up in the world of social media and what's happening in the here and now like 
it's what, what happened in the past. I'm like, who cares? I'm good now. I've got my phone. I've, you know, I'm able to go to school. Who cares about that stuff? So I feel like now and today and what is happening, I feel like I really hope, I really, really hope is going to create some change for, for a better future. You know, I, it, there's so much hate in the world. And I think, uh, well, some people just are born to hate, I guess, but I'm not that way inclined. And I think there's no. lots of people that want to spread love. It's all a talk I view it differently. I think that, I mean, there certainly are hateful people in the world, but I really do think that this is the hate. If we're going to assign the role of a hateful person, I would like to assign it to the people that created these systems that mm. were put in place that all the machine had to do was just work. And it really allowed people in this regard, like in the United States, white folks to just live their lives. And as long as they didn't challenge the system, then they wouldn't have a okay life, a great life, whatever. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have their kids and get married and have a, a, a house. But, it, but the flip side of that is, it's also adding to that system that oppresses other people. And so it's not as much the hate in the world of individuals. It's really these systems that we all participate in. Mm. And in a, blo- in, in a way that we're not seeing. When I, when I talk about fashion and talk about, oh, that's a w- women's clothing, I'm perpetuating the idea that only women can wear that dress. Mm. Yeah. And so we have to rethink those things. It's so ingrained in the way that we we think and you just say things because that's just what you've been taught your whole life and mm-hmm. how it's just the way things are when actually those things don't have to be that way. You know, who says that that's the way that it has to be? I think it's, it's been, it's, it's so interesting what the world could, I just want to go into like a, you know, I want to teleport myself to the year 2065 and just see what we're doing and see where we're at. Are we like, uh, but by that point, you know, who knows what the, the earth is going to look like with climate change. But, you know, hopefully uh, it's, uh, uh, that's a whole true. other issue. Isn't it? It's a whole, we'll be happy and equal, but we'll all be burnt up, burnt to yeah, a Yeah, we'll be burnt up, but we're like wearing like hazmat suits to go outside. Oh my gosh. But, you know, but thank you so much for coming and having a chat with me, Peppermint. It's been Absolutely. great to, you know, just have a chat and chat it out. It's been awesome. And, that when this is all over, when all COVID is over, you'll have to come and visit Yes, in London. We'd love I to absolutely you. cannot wait to visit yes. you and your beautiful family. Yes. Um, and I want to say thank you for participating in the Black Queer Town Hall. Um, it was an excellent event. With your help, we raised over $250,000. Wow. Um, yeah, and we a portion of that's going to uh, charity, the Okra Project in the United States that helps uh, Black trans women. Um, and because of that we're going to do it again in an, another year so if right. i don't see you before yeah you're here at your exactly. house i might see you at the black Bear channel absolutely hopefully it'll be like in a in person maybe rather than a virtual who knows rather like than a virtual a yeah but again thank you so much and i hope to see you very soon thank you i do love peppermint she's she's awesome and i think some really valuable lessons that I take away from that and I hope that uh, you do too and if you know anyone that might want to or need to hear that uh, or what was we just spoke about share it with them and also the donation link will be downstairs downstairs down in the description um, uh, for the queer town hall that Peppermint and Bob the Drag Queen did and they did an amazing job like you had raising over $250,000 so far so whatever you can is a massive help and thank you very much again and I will see you all very soon.